The problem with the FL Studio default limiter is that its main feature, the limiter, is actually its weakest part. By default, it ends up squashing transients, making drums sound muffled and lacking in punch. The release time is too long, making the track duck and give it this awkward inconsistent volume to the mix. And to top it off, it's on by default in every project you start. So, any beginner who's just starting out in FL Studio, who isn't going to know all the little details of mastering, is going to have this one key limiter smushing his mix, in my opinion, in an unpleasant way. I urge you, if you haven't already, go to New, From Templates, Minimal, Basic Without Limiter. This way, every time you start, you won't have your track going into the limiter. I understand the thought process behind this. Beginner producers, even more intermediate producers, are always asking why are my tracks so quiet and why aren't they as loud as the mixes I hear on the radio or elsewhere. But I'll let you hear for yourself how much Ethel limiter can affect your mix. I'll also compare other limiters and see how they stack up. I'll take the hat off. I have a drum loop here, but we're going to turn on our limiter and we're going to start boosting it. So I'll put it around 5.5. .5. Even though the limiter is turning it back down to make sure nothing goes over, the average volume is still going to be higher because there are parts of the mix that don't get limited, but they still will get that boost of gain. By the way, this is the default. All I did was just turn up uh, the gain. So let's go look for another limiter. I'm going to use Pro L. So yeah, that's also going to be 5.6. This was also the default. I didn't change anything. I just put it on. However, something I already noticed is that the transients of the drums already sound a lot sharper. So let's actually compare them this time. And I'll turn one off and then turn the other one. This is pretty transparent when you compare it to the Fruity Limiter. You can still hear, hear the transients. They still sound very nice and crisp. However, the Fruity Limiter one, not only is it not as sharp and crispy, it just sounds like there's actually compression or something. And I think that's more to do with the, uh, the release time of the limiter. It takes a long time to recover after it peaks. I think that's a night and day difference. Now there are some other limiters out there. Some are free. I think Clip Shifter is a free limiter. You can try those out. However, if you only have fruity limiters to work with, then you're going to have to make do. And so I'm going to try and find better ways of changing and working with fruity limiter. See if we can get a lot closer and a lot more transparent. Let's try that. So if I make this like exaggerated long, then all this long release time, that's going to make it sound have that compression sort of sound. However, the shorter it is, uh, the less noticeable that should be. Now, the shorter it is, you may also get more distortion that way. We'll find out. That volume ducking that happens each time it goes over zero to B, it doesn't happen as long. It just like, oh, okay, we're done. Let's go back to normal. Now I'm just gonna try and messing around with the attack. What I've noticed is that the shorter the attack is, the more distortion you will hear. Especially on that kick, that kick really makes it stand out. And the longer time is a bit safer, less distortion, but also quieter overall. Now I think already turning the attack and release down has made it a lot better of a result. We can compare it to what it was before just by getting the default limiter. This is new and this is default. Okay, so this was the default preset. And this is our new preset that we just made. I think it's a lot closer of a comparison to the Pro L. That was also default and we could probably tweak that and make that even cooler. But already this new version comes a lot closer than the default version did. And this is just drums. I chose drums because dynamics are a big part of the drums. But most tracks don't just have drums. They have bass and chords which will also get affected depending on how you limit your track. So that's it. That's all the problems addressed with Fruity Limiter, right? Wrong. Because there's actually much more you can do with Fruity Limiter. It has a whole nother tab here, a compressor. And not only does it just compress, but it also sidechains. And I really do like this for sidechaining. It is my go-to plugin for sidechaining in most cases. 
However, that doesn't mean that there isn't things that you should be aware of, things that I don't, I really think kind of should be fixed in, in, a, in a way. For instance, let's just set up a quick example here where I have a sub bass and a kick drum. So I have a sub here and I have a kick and I want them to play nicely together. So I'm gonna sidechain the sub. However, the limiter is still active and that may not be a problem in this situation, but let's just say that you had a really loud sound going into the limiter. And this isn't quote unquote correct mixing etiquette, but sometimes you do have sounds that are just really loud that internally go above zero dB it could trigger this limiter even when you don't want it to. If we were to boost this a lot, and I mean a lot. As you can see, when I go to the limiter, you can see this is the volume is actually coming in, but the white volume is, is reducing it a lot. These settings are still at default because that's what it was when you turn it on. If this was like a percussion loop or chords that had like a really important attack to them, then they could be a little bit like squashed from the limiter, even when that is not what you wanted. You never really wanted them to get limited like that. What I do is I turn on the ceiling all the way up so it can be really loud. I don't purposely want you to go over zero dB just because you can. But in the craziness of mixing, sometimes you do go over zero dB without really noticing. Or if it's a bus, that's a really good point. If it's a bus, maybe individually all your sounds are under zero dB. So if you're using a sidechain bus, which I commonly do, all those individual pieces will add up in volume. It will go over zero dB and get limited, even though that's not what you want. So you can boost the, uh, the ceiling all the way up. However, that doesn't turn it off. It only stops at 12 decibels, but let's say you had lots of elements going to the same bus, you might actually reach 12 decibels, so then there wouldn't be any way around this, they would get limited anyways. So that's just something to be aware of, using Fruity Limiter for sidechaining. The next being that the limiter is still active, so these still play a role. Even if the limiter is not actually doing any like gain reduction, this attack can still cause latency. This attack kind of works like a look ahead. The bigger you make this, the longer the latency by this plugin is. At the moment, we've set the attack to around 150 milliseconds, and that, yeah, so that equates also to 150 milliseconds. That's a long time. 150 milliseconds, that's noticeable. If you had samples that were going to straight to the master, which they shouldn't, but if they did, then you would definitely hear that difference and you'd be like, whoa, why are my, some of my samples out of sync? What's going on here? It's an easy solution, just route them to the master. But a better solution is that if you are just using this for side chaining, just turn down the attack. You'll have no latency and you're not using it because you, you've boosted this all you can. So there's real no need to have this on. So turn that off. Also by default for side chaining, I think the release time, probably a little bit long, unless you really want that long sort of house wah, 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 side chaining effect. Otherwise for like other genres of music, I actually do think it's maybe a little bit too long. So you could turn it down. So that's pretty cool. You have a pretty good understanding now of how to use Fruity Limiter as a side chaining plugin. However, there's one last thing that is seriously like a big red flag with Fruity Limiter. And that goes back to this ordering of the side chain. In this example, it wasn't a big deal because we only have one thing routed to the sub. However, let's go back to the example I was talking about was a sidechain bus. So we have a bus for all our sidechaining and we have a couple of things going towards it. Let's say just for this example, let's have a base sub synth arp. So we're routing all of these. I just did control shift to look, whoa, select a whole bunch, control shift to route these all to our sidechain group. Kick as well. So let's go back to our sidechaining We'll select the kick because that's what we want to sidechain by. However, you notice there are more things here because now we have the bass being routed to this this bus synth and arps as well. But the kick's not in the same position as it was before. It was like at number one and now it's at five. And that's just because the ordering is really important for these. It goes from left to right. So whatever is the leftmost track that's routed to the sidechain is the first one that shows up on the list. And then it goes, you know, from left to right. However, let's say we wanted to rearrange our whole drums. The moment we like move one of the tracks that is routed to the side chain, just like this, you know, oh, I'm, I'm moving this and we check back. Number five is now no longer the kick. It's the arp because that's the fifth one from left to right. You would be clueless that this had changed. And then all of a sudden you're no longer side chaining by your kick, but by your arps for, for whatever reason. And that's gonna totally mess up your mix. If your kick's really important, 
you'll probably hear that. You may not know straight away, like, oh yeah, it was the side chain. But you may like hear, like, wait a second, this isn't this isn't right. Something's happened, and it doesn't change for you. It would be perfect if this just changed itself to one, because it knows, oh yeah, I'm set to the kick. So wherever this is, I'll change kick to number five. But it doesn't do that. It like stays at whatever number it is. So you can really easily destroy your mix just by tidying it up or just changing it. Not even notice. You might have done it by accident, like swap two things around. It can happen. What I do to avoid this is have whatever I'm sidechaining by, whether it be a kick or a sidechain input, those things are always going to be as left as they can be. And I'll know, like not to not to mess them about. And then I'll keep all the, the bass and all the other things like around here, just so they're separated. I know, okay, always to the left, then it's going to be at the top of the list. And I shouldn't have to worry about me adding more stuff and then accidentally like switching stuff around or moving things and then it ruining up the side chaining. That's that's the last thing you want. I really think that should get fixed, that it actually changes, but that's not the case at the moment. So I'm just letting you know that that's something really to be aware of. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say about the Fruity Limiter. There are things that you really should know about it. I don't think it should be on by default. In my opinion, no master is better than a bad master. However, I don't think you shouldn't use it. You should just know what you want from it. Because you might not want to limit with it. You might just want to use it for its gate features or its compressors. And if that's the case, then be careful. You know, turn down latency and limiting. Be aware of that uh, sidechain thing. But knowing is half the battle. Subscribing to Dylan Tallchief. That's the other half. If you enjoyed this video, consider supporting me on Patreon. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Also, BAM! I got shirts. Mm. You can order shirts here.